This is KGW News at Noon. First up at noon, traffic is moving again on I-5 after a driver going the wrong way crashed head on into a semi truck early this morning. That's according to Portland police. They say this happened around 3 a.m. near Terwilliger Boulevard. Two people, both in that car, were taken to the hospital. We don't know their conditions and police are still investigating, but they add the car's driver may have been drunk. The driver of that semi truck is OK. The investigation closed northbound lanes on I-5 for several hours. But again, they are back open. No word on any names or charges at this point. And just outside of Seattle in Bellevue, a home slid off its foundation this morning. This is the home just a few moments ago. It's down a hill and you can see debris is everywhere. The family inside, along with their dog, were rescued and authorities say they'll be OK. Now, more than 40 neighbors are out of their homes as crews look into what happened in the area. And welcome to the news at noon. I'm Maggie Vespa. Beginning tomorrow, two more local schools will move to remote learning. Both of them are in Beaverton. They are Vos Elementary and Mountain View Middle School. And that means eight schools in that district are now in remote learning. Meanwhile, Portland Public Schools announced new safety measures to keep extracurriculars up and running. Games, concerts, and theater productions will be limited to 50% capacity, with each student getting five tickets for spe uh, spectators to come to their events. All attendees, five and up, will have to be fully vaccinated and wear a mask. Concession stands will be closed and outside food and drink will not be allowed. The district is also halting all overnight travel for games. These measures are in place indefinitely. Games and matches will be streamed online. We're tracking the growing list of school closures and changes amid the Omicron wave at KGW.com. You can also text the word school to 503-226-5088 and we'll send the link to your phone. Meanwhile, COVID hospitalizations continue to surge. As of Friday, there were 811 Oregonians in the hospital with the virus. And hospitals were already stretched thin with non-COVID patients. And now, in some cases, they're being pushed over capacity. In fact, at Salem Health, 85 people, or a quarter of their total patients, now have COVID. And right now, they're at 112% capacity. The difference now from a year ago is that we're greater than 100% capacity. So there's no room. And, and that's the part that's worrisome. And we're all holding our breath regarding flu and whether we're gonna see, see that come this season as well. Similar struggles, by the way, in Bend. Directors at St. Charles Medical Center are projecting over the next month their ER will get three times the normal number of patients. Doctors urge everyone to get vaccinated and boosted. And in Washington, Governor Jay Inslee has ordered the National Guard to help staff struggling hospitals. Right now, that does not include hospitals in Clark County, but we're told that could change. We'll keep you posted. Cases in Clark County hit a record high last week. 25% of ICU patients have COVID. What's more, ERs in Clark County are overwhelmed with asymptomatic people showing up asking for COVID tests. Hospital directors are begging people to stop doing that. Only go to the emergency room, they say, if you have symptoms like trouble breathing. Also in Washington, lawmakers are considering bills to try and deal with a shortage of nurses. Among other things, right now they're weighing, setting a limit on how many patients a nurse can be assigned. They're also weighing banning mandatory overtime. And they're considering requiring hospitals to create a committee to oversee staffing plants. Those bills have a public hearing on Wednesday. Also in short supply right now, firefighters. Portland Fire and Rescue says the pandemic is not the problem. They actually blame this on a number of hiring freezes over the last decade. Typically, new hires, they say, train for a year. But with a number of firefighters expected to retire this year, Portland Fire says 12 months for a new trainee is way too long to wait. So for the first time, Portland Fire is using a condensed or shortened training academy, and they're hoping to bring on new hires by April. Well, it could be days before we know the extent of the damage on the Pacific island of Tonga. An underwater volcano erupted on Saturday, and these satellite images from NASA show you the moment 
that had happened from space. Now, this eruption triggered tsunamis in Tonga, in Japan, in Hawaii, and it's also what caused those tsunami advisories up and down the West Coast over the weekend. In fact, in Oregon and in Washington, conditions actually turned out to be pretty mild in the wake of those warnings. This is actually drone footage from Cannon Beach. We saw stronger waves coming further inland along some parts of the Oregon coast. Tsunami warnings you probably saw went out Saturday, and in some cases, onlookers flocked to the beaches to see the waves. Officials say that is dangerous. They encourage people to heed those warnings and stay away. All right, all that being said, Rod is here now to tell us more about those coastal warnings and how high yeah. the water actually got along the coast. Hey, Rod. And, and real quick, Maggie, there are certain terms that we shouldn't exchange, and, and one is advisory and one is warning. A tsunami warning would be a far worse alert from the Weather Service than a tsunami advisory. In our area on Saturday, it was a tsunami advisory, so it's important to make that clarification. So here are the, uh, I just picked out the largest tsunami wave heights from the National Weather Service along the West Coast. Port St. Louis, California, that's uh, down a little bit north of Santa Barbara. They had four feet tsunami waves coming inland. Port Orford, which of course is on the southern Oregon coast, just over a foot. And then Keaton Cove, Alaska, up to our north, just about three feet. Uh, the picture behind me, Veronica Gaston said her friend took that at uh, Depot Bay. I believe that was on Saturday of the splashing up. But for our area, it was generally less than a foot. And it was generally a day where the, the surf was a little higher than normal and the currents were pretty strong. And as Maggie mentioned, pretty moderate overall, so that was good news. Right now, oh my, oh my, look at Cannon Beach. One of the spots getting sunshine. They're at 50 degrees, but you go inland, there's uh, Stoller Family Vineyards Estate. She is foggy and 37, and downtown Portland's just three degrees warmer. Some areas are getting some sun. We'll talk about that, and we'll have a chance of rain coming in tonight in my complete forecast. All right, Rod, appreciate it. Thank you so much. We probably don't have to tell you today is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day and people across the country are honoring his legacy by helping their communities. Tim Gordon shows us one example in Portland. Many of the volunteers marched to Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary from Portland Covenant Church to join others for King Cleanup. Out came the garbage bags and the instructions. Yes, it walk grand all the way to Shaver. For a crowd of people out to do good, including a kindergartner named Rena. All I'm gonna do is just pick up trash all the ones I see because we need to help the earth. Rena's dad, Ruben, agrees. Helping the world matters. It's a great opportunity to kind of focus in on what's important and what our neighborhoods look like and, and who we are as a country. Awesome, here you go. Yeah, thank you. So out people went from the school named after the great civil rights leader. Okay, so our plan to protect today is to fan out from Northeast 9th in Alberta to 6th in Alberta, then south from Alberta to Shaver, picking up any litter, any trash that we see. Community service organization Neighbors Helping Neighbors helped coordinate the trash pickup day. Couples, kids, groups of varying size found litter to pick up and refresh this historic Northeast Portland neighborhood, a history that includes Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary School. The same school that saw a peaceful protest on Friday with parents demanding King be taken off the list of consideration for relocating Tubman Middle School due to I-5 expansion plans. There is a direct connection between Sunday's neighborhood cleanup and the effort to preserve the school named in Dr. King's honor, says PTA President Tyler Brown. I think the school mirrors uh, everything that his dream has and, and, and people of all ethnic backgrounds working together working together um, and uh, accomplishing a dream. In Northeast Portland, Tim Gordon, KGW News.